education session. Glad you all could attend. Um, the title that I have doesn't match your title. That's true. So I'll let you read the title. Yes, sir. Okay. Good morning, uh, Tim Bernbrenner. I'll be presenting my thesis this morning, uh, Optimization Routine for Compressor Design Using Commercial Software. Uh, before we begin, I'd like to thank Dr. Gannon for his immense patience with me over the course of our two-year relationship. I'd like to thank Dr. Frank Geraldo at the Math Department for fostering my interest in scientific computation, without which I probably wouldn't be doing this thesis. And I'd like to thank my wife uh, for her patience during the ebb and flow of my uh, stresses working on this. Outline of what we'll be speaking uh, on today. Uh, in the right hand side, you see a picture of the compressor designed uh, by Dr. Drayton uh, during his uh, dissertation work. Uh, it, he's the one who created the underlying design procedure uh, on which I've been improving and adding the optimization routine. The objective of my thesis uh, was to incorporate an optimization procedure into Dr. Drayton's uh, existing procedure uh, for compressor rotor design. Uh, to achieve that objective, I had uh, three aims. Uh, the first was to define a function that modeled our real-world design goals of a compressor. Uh, the second was to parameterize the design inputs uh, for the blade camber angle. Uh, by parameterizing, we were able to create a degree of freedom for the optimization problem. And then to embed that function within our procedure uh, so that we could attempt to find an optimal compressor design based off of that iterative element. So the motivation for this work uh, largely is to leverage the computational power. Uh, Dr. Drayton's work was uh, very effective in producing compressor designs, but it still required human input, um, and that required time to to find a sensible input answer. Uh, but by leveraging the computational power, we can iterate on the design very quickly uh, and perhaps achieve a design which would otherwise have been infeasible because of that manpower uh, required. Uh, the second, uh, most of the previous work on compressor optimization tends to focus either on pressure ratio or efficiency or mass flow to the detriment of one of those other parameters. Uh, and so the optimization function allowed us to create a, a holistic view of how to quantify the value of a compressor design. And then the third aim uh, is ultimately to be able to take that compressor design and create a more, uh, a better gas turbine engine, uh, one with reduced weight, reduced physical size, or one that will uh, reduce fuel consumption, able to last longer. So background, in the upper left-hand corner, we have a general schematic for a gas turbine engine. Air comes in, it is compressed, fuel is added, which combusts, and the hot exhaust gases run through the turbine, which then drive the compressor. So we're specifically looking at the compressor rotors uh, towards the left-hand side. And the reason we care about the compressor rotor is because you'll see there's multiple stages in order to achieve the desired pressure ratio in the combustion chamber. So if we have a better compressor uh, stage, uh, we can then have fewer stages, and that's going to reduce our uh, rotational mass. Uh, and then on the right-hand side, you can see standard speed lines uh, for the gas turbine engine. Those are reproduced from Dr. Drayton's dissertation. And so you can see as we run closer to the 100% RPM range, that we then get a much slimmer mass flow range uh, before, we, uh, before we come up against our stall margin. So if we are able to broaden that stall margin in the operating range for any given RPM, we can then increase the ability for the engine to operate. And then ultimately, then on the lower right-hand side, we have our efficiency. We can improve the efficiency of our compressor, then we can reduce our fuel usage, and that's just generally beneficial. So Dr. Drayton's procedure that he uh, created in his dissertation is outlined on the top. Uh, so he would provide uh, the predetermined design data. From there, MATLAB would generate blade sections that then gets sent to SOLIDWORKS to produce a model that's then sent to ANSYS to conduct CFD to 
produce a speed line, and then the speed line was kind of what we were ultimately testing against with this uh, real world compressor. And then that's illustrated then along the bottom side. You can see the blade sections being lofted up uh, in the preliminary design, and the detailed design, those are added to the hub where we would conduct CFD. We then ana analyze the speed line and then the mechanics of the compressor, and then we were able to produce an actual compressor to run in the test rig. So overview of the work for the thesis. Uh, the first point was to create an optimization function. Without a way of quantifying how good a particular compressor is, the optimizer isn't able to drive towards an optimal solution. So our Z function is listed there. Uh, that is the trapezoidal rule for integration of the product of efficiency and pressure ratio with respect to mass flow rate. That's illustrated on the right hand side. So you can see uh, what we, for the optimizer, we throttled at three specific back pressures, illustrated by the one, two, and three. And then we have the pressure ratios plotted with respect to the mass rate. We have the efficiencies for each of those three throttling pressures. And then we have the product of the pressure ratio and efficiency. And then we take the integral of that with respect to mass rate. So you can see the area of that polygon in the lower right hand side is actually how we're quantifying Z. So again, the reason that we care about pressure ratio is if our, if our individual stage is able to achieve a higher pressure ratio, that's gonna minimize the total number of stages that we need. Uh, the reason that we care about efficiency is because uh, higher efficiency is going to reduce our fuel consumption. And then the reason that we, can, we integrate with respect to mass rate is because we desire to increase the mass flow range to minimize that stall margin. The second uh, design point, once we have a way of quantifying the value of a compressor, uh, we had to parameterize the design inputs so that the optimizer had a degree of freedom on which to iterate. So the equation that we used is listed there. Camber angle is the angle of the core with respect to the central axis. And we, the original values that are sent to the optimizer are listed on the table on the right. So you can see we chose A to be the singular degree of freedom for the optimizer. The physical effect of changing A is given in that middle figure. So you can see on the left, where A is 23, we have uh, still a J-shaped curve to the camber. And then when A equals 46, we start to get an S-curve for, for that camber angle. And so the A was chosen as our single degree of freedom specifically because of how pressure ratio is determined. The equation for pressure ratio is reproduced in that lower right-hand corner. So CP and gamma are both constants for our working fluid. Uh, T01 uh, was a constant for our problem. U is also a constant. Efficiency is a byproduct of our compressor design. So the only real way of affecting that pressure ratio was, in fact, the degree of turning, delta, delta C theta. Um, and we chose A, uh, so that, that turning rate would also have been achieved uh, iterating over B or D. However, we chose A specifically because of its more dramatic effect at the tip of the uh, compressor blade, uh, where we wanted to have a more flat camber angle at the tip respect, uh, because of the increased tip velocity, because it's now further away from the hub. So then we took our optimization function and our design parameters and we embedded them into an optimization procedure. So you can see that it was largely bolted on to Dr. Drayton's design. We uh, defined our iteration parameter A, and then the optimizer routine then generates profiles, produces a CAD model, conducts CFD analysis. Uh, for this uh, framework, we chose three throttling back pressures. So it'll run the test three times. We then uh, calculate the optimization value of the Z function. The algorithm decides whether or not it's achieved a minimum or not. Uh, if not, then it goes through and reiterates until it achieves what it, uh, what it perceives to be an optimum value. So 
So we frame the optimization problem as maximize Z, which is a function of the pressure ratio, the efficiency, and the mass flow rate by selection of A subject to A existing between 36 and 58. 58 was selected as an upper range for A because beyond 58, the camber angle becomes greater than 90, which is a physically unrealistic uh, camber angle. And then 36 was chosen as the lower limit because of the difficulties in running CFD at less than that value. The results are shown here. So on the left hand and the middle column, uh, we have the recorded data uh, from hard running the optimizer at specific A values. So we went from 36 to 58 in two degree increments for A. And then you can see we had our global min here at A equals 36 with local mins at 40 and then 46. Um, you can see at 44, there is a data point which looks uh, out of place. Um, and that kind of illustrates the difficulties in using CFD as a blind source of data for the Z function um, because going from 36 to 58, it had an uh, inconsistent solution from CFD at 44. But the polyfit data uh, for those points are given down here. So if the optimization function had a complete data set, we would expect it to find a global min at about uh, A equals 36. And then we would expect uh, it to perhaps to get lost in this local min at about A equals 55. Um, the function that we chose was F min bound, which is not guaranteed to find a global minimum, simply a local minimum which is why those locals are pointed out there. If we were to discard 44, uh, the resulting data is given over here on the right-hand side, and we can see that in that case, the uh, global min is still give, going to be found here, uh, where we would expect it at A equals 36, uh, with potential local minima increasing along. Uh, but the strength of those local minima are still less than the global min, which is, again, what we would expect physically. Um, as opposed to if we include the erroneous point at 44, where the global min is actually over here, and then we have uh, a stronger local min at the far right-hand side, as opposed to the local min that we have on the left-hand side. Running the optimizer, uh, we achieved these, goal, uh, these results of a Minimum at A equals 49.6 uh, with a Z value of 22.8. Uh, those values are shown here. Uh, so you can see that the optimum result was found there. Um, but if we go through the data from the optimizer, it actually had a global minima here. Um, and you can see there's a strong disparity between those values, and it's uh, illustrative of that same problem of CFD producing um, an inconsistent and, uh, solution when we run it. Um, if we were to exclude that minima, we then would have this refined curve here, uh, and then now on that curve you can see where it started searching there um, at about A equals 49. Um, and getting fairly significant differences in Z based off of really small changes in A, which is, but ultimately it was this erroneous point here which drove the solution closer to that 49.6. Going back, uh, illustrating the Z function for that A equals 49.6 answer, uh, we have the pressure ratio plotted, the efficiency plotted, and then the integral plotted on the right hand side. So in conclusion, uh, we were successfully able to model our design goals in terms of a Z function to try and optimize. Uh, we were successfully able to parameterize those design values uh, to support the iterative process. And then we made a framework for generating optimal compressors. Um, there are physical limitations. It's somewhat unrobust in the way that it searches, but that framework was laid for future research and then we illustrated the, the discon how discontinuous CFD data complicates the process of using that for our optimization data. So uh, for reference, 
A equals 44.4 on the left hand side was the initial guess of F min bound for where the uh, minimum would be. And then the resulting compressor design of uh, 49.6 then is there on the right hand side. So the optimum solution that it found had a slightly steeper decline in that angle than what uh, the initial guess was. And then this is an illustration of that whole compressor. Any questions? Thank you. Questions? A leading one. Sir? So can you increase the number of the degrees of freedom in this? Um, not using F min bound. F min bound is a single degree of freedom function. We'd have to switch to a different underlying math uh, function. Uh, one of, because of that discontinuous CFD data, one of the recommendations I would make is implementing a Kalman filter or some other way of screening out erroneous data points. If we, because that's not a standard feature for any of the MATLAB optimization functions that I've that I found, uh, that would maybe be a good uh, future research point is to incorporate. Um, that common filter with a multi-DOF optimization procedure. Uh, we chose I chose FMIN bound uh, because the golden section search doesn't require a derivative, uh, which makes sense given the CFD data. We saw how it was discontinuous; it wouldn't have a smooth derivative. So, were we to improve the, the number of freedom, we'd probably need a better underlying function. Um, however. Multi-DOF is certainly a good future step. Uh, so A was chosen because it has a strong change at the tip as opposed to the hub, um, but it does still change the, the camber angle at the hub. So as A becomes stronger, we're likely going to need to uh, slack in one of those, uh, either B or D in that equation to compensate, to achieve what would be a, a globally optimal compressor. Any other questions? Thank you.